I'm here. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network, listen to the voices of... Ah, good evening, good evening, good evening. It's Wednesday, November 26, 2014, and welcome to the BCS Experience, History, Arts, Culture, and Politics in Review and Discussion. I'm Byron C. Saunders, your host with the most. The BCS Experience takes a look at our rich history, African American history. We're going to share with you some known and unknown historical facts and information from the past and connect the dots on how they have impacted on our present day events and how they will definitely shape our future as African Americans in this country and around the world. The BCS Experience, history, arts, culture, politics, and review and discussion. This is Internet Radio and will be aired live every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. from the studios of the BW Moving Images on the GoPro Radio Network. You know, I'm really excited about this opportunity to talk to you all across the country and around the globe. You see, I want you to tune in on your computer or your phone. And I want you to become a loyal listener, and I personally invite you to lend your voices to this radio talk show to express your opinions on my weekly topics. Now, this is Social Network Radio at its finest. Here's the number for you to call in to be a part of the discussion. Call 347-884-9839. Ah, this week's topic, Thanksgiving. A celebration of the harvest and a time for giving thanks for all your blessings and a time to share. But, oh my goodness, there is chaos and strife and greed and racism and poverty and depression, especially in our African American communities. And how are you coping with it all? Ah, let's talk about these issues and where you can get some help. This is my show, and this is the new Underground Railroad Express. Next stop is your neighborhood, all aboard, to freedom and to freedom land. All right, we're going to jump right into this. I want to hear from you. Let's connect the dots and make sense out of it all. Let's talk. Call me, 347-884-9839. Tonight... I have a very special guest that will be joining us. Joining me in the studio as my featured call-in guest this evening is none other than my good friend, Reverend Dr. D.L.C. Boyce, a Christian certified psychotherapist to discuss how you are coping with the crisis in your life and the world around you, like Ferguson, Missouri, Brooklyn, New York City, Cleveland, Ohio, just pick a place where African Americans are in, in, in prominence in the majority. And so many more urban stories of tragedy, angst, and mounting despair. Good evening, Dr. Boyce. Welcome to the BCS Experience. Well, Dr. Boyce, I'm blessed and highly favored. And I'm going to start my show off with a, a different take today because this is a we're in, this is Thanksgiving and this is harvest time, and the fruit on the vine is thick, and we need some people out there to help us pick this because we got some stuff going on in our world and especially our African American communities where we need support for each other and to bring ourselves together. So, Dr. Boyce, with an unusual opening to my show. Would you do me the favor, Reverend Dr. D.L.C. Boyce, and lead us in prayer? Uh, it would be my uh, pleasure and it's such a blessing. Father, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, for Nazareth, Lord, we have come through so many difficult times, and, and you have victoriously brought us over. And we're looking, uh, dear God, with, in hindsight, 
and our ancestors, pray God, both those from generations past and, and those uh, recently, even in the, in the 20th century. Father, we know that they gave their lives that we might have access and freedoms and, and deliverance from oppression, from racism, from, uh, from depression, uh, and from self-hatred. And so at this time, Lord, we ask that you renew our spirits, renew and refresh us and give us wisdom and insight on how to handle the current situation. Uh, Father, you said not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And so in this show tonight, Father, we are looking forward, praise God, to a harvest, a harvest of words, a harvest of healing, and a harvest of, of calming the emotions and letting them know that you are truly the answer to the situation right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I appreciate your leading us in that very special Thanksgiving prayer because we cannot have Thanksgiving, ladies and gentlemen, unless we give honor and praise to the Father in heaven and his yes. Son and the Holy Spirit. So this, I hope, is what you do before you put that first morsel in your mouth tomorrow, that you give thanks for your blessings, for the harvest, and for the feast that you're about to join. Because guess what? There are a lot of people who are not going to have a Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. And it's a very shame that in this world, that with all the food that's being produced and cooked for tomorrow's special event, that imagine the waste and the garbage that's going to go thrown into an incinerator somewhere where it could have fed somebody else. So what are you doing in this life if you're not helping to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, heal the sick, and give hope to the hopeless. That's what it's all about, folks. That's the meaning of Thanksgiving and the reason for the season, as they say. Okay, Dr. Boyce, we're going to jump right into the stuff that's going on in the country. I can talk about the history, but we got history that's being played out right now on our televisions as most people are getting ready to tune in to the nightly news on ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, Fox, although I wish you wouldn't turn into Fox, but those who will, here's the deal. I, I'm going to give you a, a, a set of headlines. I got a blog that I'm going to add, and then we're going to talk about it, Dr. Boyce. Here's the first one. Does Ferguson, Missouri, show that cops who kill get off too easily? And here's my blog. Democracy is seriously fractured, ladies and gentlemen, and dangerously close to fascism. Because when police are given the opportunity to be judge, jury, and executioner without oversight or impunity, America beware, you are on a slippery slope of total destruction. Dr. Boyce, talk to me. Oh my, so much in that block, so much that you, that you stated and you've indicated. Uh, Yes, we are on a on a slippery slope. But uh, in in my perception, uh, or in my spirit, I feel like much is being orchestrated. Uh, it, the things that are happening now are, are things that we're almost revisiting. Yes, these are things from uh, uh, from the sixties and fifties and 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 and, and, and etc. And I, I know I've said this a number of times uh, uh, on your show. But it, it just seems that, that someone stood back uh, to read our history against American history and, and against, uh, uh, with a mind that was filled with racial prejudice and, uh, and, a, and a desire to take over. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it, in, in, in a, a, another aspect, it seems that, um, you know, you have people, uh, and you find this uh, uh, in the therapeutic field, that hold on to anger and they hold on to things and, and they look for ways to get back. And so this almost reminds me of, uh, you know, people who were in various forms of enforcement um, who were angry by the, um, uh, the positive change that occurred after the 60s and 70s. Yes. And that they wanted a way to have revenge. And so they plotted these years. And, and here we are doing the same kinds of things um, uh, uh, against uh, black people, against, um, you know, uh, other nationalities uh, uh, that you did, uh, you know, it's, it's um, that you did back in, in the 50s and in the 60s. And I, I'm, I'm just wondering, 
just wondering, are, are we dealing with the, the children uh, of the, uh, if I can mention this organization, and I, I hope that you'll forgive me, sure. are we dealing with the children of the Klan and, 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 and the Minutemen and, and all of those racist kinds of groups? Uh, I, I look at the Tea Party, and the Tea Party sort of reminds me of those, of those hooded groups, you know. I mean, sure. they look at us with hoodies. But they were hoods themselves. Oh, they were hoods before you know, we wore them. In fact, if, if I look at the term hood love, yes. it probably would fit some of those um, um, hooded organizations. But I, 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 it's like they want to go back and punish us for what we've accomplished. Oh, it's no doubt. The construct of what this, what's happening right now, and I'm glad you put it in that context, is that indeed they are trying to punish us for having overcome and there's a movie coming out, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you right now, forget about all the, the movies and the flights of fancy that you're going to see during the next four weeks because they're going to come at you fast and furious. Hollywood got, got the movie about the exodus. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, because the exodus, you ain't going to see no black people. You're going to see strictly white people. Egyptians look white. The Jews look white. You know where the black people at? Because we're the chosen people. This is an escape out of Africa. That's coming out. But you need to go and see Selma. Selma is the movie about the march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And I'm telling you, you're going to see a familiarity from that period to what just happened in, in Ferguson, Missouri. And what happened in New York City. And what happened in Cleveland, Ohio. Just yesterday. What happened down in Florida. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Boyce is right. This is an instant replay and somebody's trying to pay us back and punish us because we have and we did have some moments of overcoming. But you got to wake up. And that's what's amazing to me is that the sleeping giant has awakened, which takes me to my next point, Dr. Boyce. Reaction to Ferguson. Here's a headline. Reaction to Ferguson decision shows racial divide remains over views of justice. Here's my blog to that. History has proven, history, ladies and gentlemen, has proven that this divide is one-sided and favors the police and the establishment. History does not lie, but often the police and the establishment do. Dr. Boyce. You know, it's interesting. I had a conversation uh, with uh, a uh, gentleman I was in a uh, PhD program with, and we talked periodically. Yes. Uh, and I, I'm looking at, um, I, I'm looking at our period of sleeping that you just talked about. Yes. We, we were lulled into giving away a right of being tried by a jury of our peers. Uh, when that was came out, now, in this case with Ferguson, I, I guess um, he benefited from that right because it was a jury of his peers, yes. you know, with the exception of, of a few um, uh, black uh, uh, individual who, individuals who participated. But I'm sure that, you know, they didn't have much uh, uh, input. I'm sure they didn't have much input in that decision. Right. Uh, so it, we have been um, lulled through, you know, some of the traditional things like uh, like drugs and, and, and alcoholism. I mean, even the Native Americans can testify to what the law um, had been uh, for people of, of this or people of color to keep us uh, down, or, and even women, for that matter. In the 80s, we were seduced by, by uh, uh, um, uh, with, um, I'm sorry, commercials and, and TV programs that added so much sexual content that the whole idea of Family TV was just thrown out of the window. And, and I don't know what show on TV uh, presents that. Uh, now, the thing in New Jersey is that um, they want to have um, Satanism taught in the classroom. I saw so, that. I mean, we were lulled yes. by certain things, yes. like, like uh, toys uh, uh, that were monsters and that kind of thing that we brought into the house. We were lulled by um, Harry Potter and that kind of thing. So, uh, we so wanted to be a part of, of the major. Um, uh, population, so we call the majority population, but there's no majority. Yeah. Um, we were loved into wanting to be loved by these folk, and we lost our ground. It, it's a syndrome that I call the Goldilocks syndrome. You know, Goldilocks was through this. Yeah, oh, yes. uh, 
You understand? It Absolutely. Does. She rolls them out. She goes in, takes over, takes everything. They don't have cards. They don't have anything else. And that's what we are, are, have experienced in our community. And that's what we're still experiencing. Well, Dr. So Boyce. we're being lulled into these uh, kinds of uh, uh, riots and, and that kind of thing. Technology brought to the forefront what they have been doing all along. And yes. that is killing young black men. It's also a heroic um, syndrome. Yeah. You know, you, 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 kill a, you kill the promise. You, you remember how they killed all of the children uh, yes. in the Bible? Oh, yeah. Because they thought the Christ was coming. Oh, yeah. First male, so born child. They wanted to kill them all. That's just, right. Just in case. It, there's that syndrome as well. You know, I, I'm, I'm reminded, that, thank you for bringing us back to the scriptural text about the firstborn male, because that's exactly what they did. There was a there was a, po prog a pogrom, as they call it. You got to look that word up, P-O-G-R-O-M, folks, a pogrom, a concerted effort to destroy and, is, and eliminate a, a systematic process. And what happened over there in East New York, over there... In in uh, Councilman Assemblyman Barron's off um, um, uh, uh, district. district. Mm -hmm. Now here's what really is amazing to me: the police department acknowledging that it was an accident. Oh my! Um, you know, and I'm like, excuse me, an accident is a car fender bender. An accident is somebody falling off their bicycle. An accident is tripping up and slipping on a banana. But when an accident becomes a death, please call it what it really is, an accidental death. I'll go with that. But you made it sound like uh, Commissioner Bratton. You made it sound like it. Well, his, his business is normal. It was an accident without respect for the family, oh, without my. respect for the community. But it was an accident only. Dr. Boyce. And <laughs> I'm not. I, we have these, <laughs> these, um, because he made another uh, analogy last week that uh, uh, police commissioner Ray Kelly, before him, yes. uh, was at fault because he sent all of these new recruits out um, to do a, a, a kind of tactic or, or uh, that was used by the military, yes. but they were not prepared to do it. And so that's why they did such a poor job at it. Um, you need to pull them in. If you need um, sensitivity uh, training for your officers, it, the, and let's not just deal with New York. Yeah, the right, system exactly. needs to take a look at who is a part of what we have uh, called the force to protect us. We need to see who, I mean, who's on board. You know, maybe we have a little submerged uh, organization within the organization that's not following what we call justice. And, and maybe they need to be weeded out. And I guess the higher agency would have to look in uh, to do that. Well, the Justice Department, will, right, the Justice Department is going to have to take a look at each and every one of these police departments because they're practicing racial profiling. It doesn't matter whether it's African-Americans, Mexicanos, Chicanos, Latinos, uh, Asians, people of color are being profiled. And, and at the end of the profile is the police officer who is only there to serve and protect is being given the infamous opportunity to be judge, jury, and executioner. That is what we have going on in this country, which takes me to this next point. Dr. Boyce, I don't think you heard this story, but last night, two nights ago, Michael Brown Sr.'s church, he just was baptized this past weekend. Michael Brown's father, Michael Brown Sr.'s church was burned in Ferguson and the pastor suspects white supremacists. You didn't hear this story on none of the channels. All right. Here's my blog. America, you're spinning out of control and you better realize that it's not going to get better. With this happening and the church of Michael Brown seniors being suspiciously torched will remind many of the Jim Crow years of segregation, bombings, and lynchings throughout America. This is what ugly really looks like. You think ugly is burning down? I don't even call it a riot. I call it an uprising. But you want to see ugly? Look at the picture of the Michael Brown Sr.'s church that was just burned down three days ago. 
Dr. Boyce, talk to me. It's orchestrated. <laughs> okay. It, this is, is orchestrated. It's, uh, you can feel it brewing. And, and, and I'll say I've, I've been uh, in various schools uh, of learning uh, in higher education for much of my life. And I, and I just share that because uh, I, I guess God had a reason for me sitting in there to hear how things were being planned and, and to observe uh, while there um, all of my Caucasian brothers and sisters, uh, especially well, in some of the doctoral programs I had been in, reading black history, searching, I mean, ser- searching black history, and to come back into my community, and we had the interest at the time. You know, we, we were lulling each other to come away from anger, to come away from uh, being concerned about the things that, uh, you know, allowed us to... Uh, to bond so that we wouldn't have these situations. I mean, they existed, but we bonded. I mean, you couldn't say that a neighbor's child was injured. The, the whole building was ready to go. The whole community was up and on. But now we're in our individual uh, apartments and our homes, and we're in front of our TV sets uh, looking at scandalous kinds of things. You know, uh, we're loved by our, our, our technology. Technology is the drug that has kept us away from taking active, from actively participating in, in uh, putting forth measures to stop some of these kinds of things that are going on. You're right. I have a side, I, 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 let me just say, I, I, I guess I'll be introducing this all the time. It felt like at that time that there was some sort of um, outside organization that was not only playing um, a Minorities, so-called minorities, um, diaspora and, and, and others against each other. You know, uh, you know, women were, were part of the 60s movement and, you know, blacks and, and, and uh, with Mexicans and Chicanos, they always asked them for ID. There was, there was a lot of things going on. And so everybody was there. Everybody wanted justice. And we cared about um, each other. So it, it seemed that someone read it uh, and they wanted to repeat it. You know, I mentioned the thing about revenge and, and, and all of that. But, I mean, America seems like they're being played as well. It, um, it, um, my mother, take a look at how these um, individuals who have perpetrated these crimes against these young people, they all have a similar look. They're all kind of sandy-haired people and, and, and that kind of thing. It, it, it almost seems like, it, do you remember they used to have sleeper camps? Oh, yeah. It almost seems, and I wonder what section of the country those uh, those were in primarily. It almost seems like they've offered us as bait to folk whom they knew were going to come in to take over this country. Well, I you, know it sounds like that. Well, you remember but, uh, back in the 60s, it, we did, uh, the FBI and the Justice Department did instigate and institute Pro. They set it up for the possibility to destroy the African-American civil rights leaders and their movement. Uh, in addition to that, I'm going to step up even further. Now, you brought it to my attention. You said the word scandalous. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I hate to tell you, but you're watching scandal. You're watching how to get away with murder on television. ABC calls it the hottest night in television during the week. And what are they showing you? They're showing you a perversion of a lifestyle. And yes, it's a hot show. And yes, a black woman wrote it. But scandal Come on, people. Come on, people. You think that stuff is real? All right? Come on. You're talking about how to get away with murder? Come on now. A black woman who's an attorney, very powerful, how to get teaching how to get away with murder. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not making this title up. This is the stuff that you're watching. This is the stuff you're being lulled to sleep in. And here's where it really gets worse. During this Ferguson incident and in new york do you know why folks have been stockpiling guns and weapons of destruction at an enormous amount and let me just say this very pointedly and very clearly they're not buying guns to go out and shoot the turkey for tomorrow they're not buying guns to go out and shoot the deer that's running in the forest they're buying guns because in their crosshairs they've got african-american people period 
and the Justice Department is allowing a Armageddon to be actually set up in which white people who have all these guns are pointing them directly at, 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 and make no mistake about it, all those weapons, that high tech stuff that they're bringing down with the National Guard, they're not protecting those buildings. Where are, they, where are they aiming those guns and the military weaponry that they've brought into that community? They're aiming them directly at us. Because they could protect those buildings from being burnt down. Put a cordon around it. You know, put a tank in front of the building that, just not, that you think is about to be burnt down. Uh-uh. You got your weapons and your, and, your, and your tanks and all your military personnel pointing the guns at the people. Not protecting or serving, but in, 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 a, in a military stance to engage in an execution. Dr. Boyce, am I lying? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, the, the fact that they were purchasing tanks and, and, yeah. and that kind of thing uh, around the country, um, it, it, it's very interesting. Uh, it, you know, you, you were saying that, and I'm thinking about the financing. You know, where's all this financing coming from? From the uh, Justice Department. See the, 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 see, the Department of Defense gets... Billions and billions and trillions of dollars to do what? Make weapons of mass destruction. Engage in war. So when there's no war, who's going to get that equipment? Who's next in line to play military game war games? Well, the, the police department. And they're not getting buying it. They're getting it for free. This is where your money, your tax dollars are going to. And, and trust me, when I tell you this, my brothers and sisters, if you really think you're going to win a war and win this revolution with a BB gun, let me just advise you. The weaponry that they're using and pointing at you and the weaponry that the white folks have been buying and stockpiling are weapons of mass destruction that will eliminate you. The idea is extinction. Not wounding we're talking extinction and that's why we need responsible and common sense gun legislation we need legislation that's going to eradicate guns not put more guns back into the communities that are not ours and into the hands of people who are aiming them directly at us all right dr boyce there is hope <laughs> guess what there is hope and this is the next headline because I read this and I was very intrigued because in the midst of all the chaos going down in Ferguson, you know who's coming together, which is rather amazing. It's the young people and clergy. Clergy work through the night, day, calling for justice with peace in Ferguson, Missouri. And here's what the, the, that headline and the article that came after it said. Following the grand jury's decision not to indict police officer Darren Wilson for the shooting death of Michael Brown, thousands took to the street in Ferguson, Missouri and around the country to protest as alternating scenes of peaceful demonstrations and those of violence, fire and looting were broadcast. Ferguson faith leaders repeatedly urged that the only way to move forward was to amplify the voices of peace. Many local clergy who had called for nonviolent resistance before the decision called for justice afterward. Reverend Ronald L. Bobo Sr., senior pastor at Westside Missionary Baptist Church, who has been involved in the local clergy coalition, warned that people should not let bitterness overcome them even at a time when they are asking, where is God? And I heard a sermon on Sunday, Dr. Boyce. I got to talk about this one. I heard a sermon at my church, Christian Cultural Center, Pastor A.R. Bernard, and he talked about the principle of dung. That's right, folks. You heard it right. You know what dung is. You know the feces, the feces that animals create principle of dung meaning also that yes in life you're going to step in a lot of stuff but like the farmer who knows that when he cleans up the stall and he doesn't get rid of the dung 
he makes it into fertilizer. And this is harvest time, and you better respect what the farmer has brought to you at your dinner table tomorrow because a lot of that came because of somebody respecting the principle of dung. Dr. Boyce, talk to me. Well, I don't know if I can speak to you. <laughs> the principles of dung, it was a powerful message. It was powerful. That was, powerful. Uh, that, was uh, that, you know, uh, there are times when we're going to have to work with people who we're not uh, kindred with, yes. who we can't get along with. But we're going to have to identify principles and practices um, that would allow us to at least get the work done. Get the job done. Uh, it, it's important at this time that we press into our faith. You know, you can't ask, where is God, when you have not had a faith relationship. And, and I notice that um, uh, people very often, uh, and people, uh, when people go through a crisis situation, uh, whether in church or not, sometimes the thought uh, comes up. But in this life, we are going to experience things. What we have to do is to go through um, our everyday walk and see where the pitfalls are. Um, if we are being lulled to sleep by um, various means of media and, um, you know, just a poor relationship with God, then we need to, you know, pull ourselves into a place where we could get some assistance so that we could remove obstacles that present us from uh, uh, giving our best. Um, I hope one day there's a place where um, Ku Klux Klan and, and, and those folks can get help for their race, racist practices and, and, and the issues that have caused them to be so evil. Okay? So, so if, if we look at humankind in, in general, we are all nothing without God. And we're proving it. You know, uh, and, and we're talking about these very... We're proving it, you know, uh, within all of these situations that we're experiencing. So one has to have a self-look and, and, and see where they are. Where are you with God? You know, what, what's your um, prayer life like? What are your um, practices of giving and, and assuring not only that your house is in good shape, but someone else is in good shape? You know, years ago, it used to be a complete family. You cared about your aunts, uncles, the elderly in your family. Today, it is you only care about yourself. How you look, you dress up the outside while the inside is all broken up in the store. And that's across the border. Now, we may come out and react in different ways, but, but that's the case. Look at how music was distorted, um, especially when we looked at the image of the black female. We had great pride and respect. For, uh, for uh, women, uh, but we've allowed uh, money, uh, wicked spirituality, to distort our music and to distort um, our, the, the messages that came from, from our music. If you compare the 60s message uh, with the message that came out in, in the 80s and 90s, you know, calling women bees and that kind of thing, but we have to look internally and begin to... Um, to uh, uh, identify the problems and, and the problems and begin to fix them as we are looking on the outside at, you know, what uh, someone else who also has uh, some issues that cause them to stand up and want uh, to exterminate people. You know, we have to look and see what's inside of us that's causing us to do this. Right, right. I see if America is being played, that's the way that you would play it. That's right. You well, play them against each other. There it is. And I, I, I really is. think America is being played. Oh, it is indeed. Now, here's where, here's where it gets really deep, okay? As much as we have a Supreme Court that is conservative and right-wing, led by Justice Scalia, I want you to hear this, ladies and gentlemen, because when I tell you that what Justice Scalia said about Ferguson and the grand jury, you're going to have to understand why our system is completely broken. Here's what Justice Scalia explains what was wrong with the Ferguson grand jury. And it goes on to say, On Monday, prosecutor, that's in Missouri, Bob McCullough, 
announced that a grand jury had decided not to indict Darren Wilson, the officer who killed Michael Brown. But that decision was the result of Justice Antonin Scalia in the 1992 Supreme Court case of United States versus Williams explained that the role of a grand jury has been for all per process that turned the pr purpose of a grand jury on its head hundreds of years. It is the grand jury's function not to inquire upon what foundation the charge may be denied or otherwise to try the suspect's defenses, but only to examine upon what foundation the charge is made by the prosecutor. Republica versus Schaefer, one doll, 236, OT Philadelphia 1788. You see, it's been referenced, it's been historically documented by the Supreme Court themselves. See also F. Wharton Criminal Pleading and Practice, uh, uh, issue 30, 360, pages 248 and 249 in the 8th edition, 1880. As a consequence, neither in this country nor in England has the suspect under investigation by the grand jury ever been thought to have a right to testify or to have exculpatory evidence presented. So your kangaroo court, I'm going to break it down in yeah. plain, it's simple. A kangaroo court. I'm going to yeah. break it down to you in plain, simple language. The kangaroo, kangaroo court and what was going on in the grand jury was so unconstitutional that you see we have got to stand by the legality and right. pursue it on that level because if we pursue okay. it on any other level you're going to lose ladies and gentlemen because you don't have the weaponry to fight against it you have god on your side and you have justice on your side and your constitution so therefore the this passage was first highlighted by a Attorney Ian Samuel, a former, former clerk to Justice Scalia. You see, in contrast, McCullough allowed Wilson to testify for hours before the grand jury. Listen, so, so it, it, it has to be thrown out. That's right. And presented them with every scrap of exculpatory evidence available. And in his press conference, McCullough, the prosecutor, said that the grand jury did not indict because eyewitnesses' testimony that established Wilson was acting in self-defense was contradicted by other exculpatory evidence. What McCullough didn't say is that he was under no obligation to present such evidence to the grand jury. The only reason one would present such evidence is to reduce the chances that the grand jury would indict Daryl Wilson, Darren Wilson. There you have it, folks. You got to know how the landscape was played out. Right. You hear, did you hear that, Mr. Line Engineer? You understand what just went down in Ferguson? The kangaroo court, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. So that, the, that was the kangaroo court. Yeah. The Florida. Oh, yeah. Now, the Florida court for Trayvon Martin. They yeah. need to go. They need to be in Hollywood. That's right. And here's something else you didn't know because we're coming into the final seven or eight minutes of my show. Yesterday, same day, was it yesterday? It seems like such a long time ago because we were anticipating this decision anyway. On the same day, Monday, when the decision was rendered by the grand jury, do you remember Melissa Alexander, the young woman in Florida who was charged and convicted the first time around with Stand Your Ground? Yeah. In the middle, Dr. Boyce is a true story. We were in the middle of, of, in rehearsal at the Cherry Lane Theater in New York City on Monday, getting ready to do the one woman show that Sabrina Lamb has about Marissa Alexander. And we got a call from Florida. This is so hot. Y'all didn't know this until it was broken yesterday. The news story broke, but we were in rehearsal and got a call from Melissa Alexander's people in Florida to say that she had accepted the plea deal forced into accepting a plea deal in which she acknowledged guilt to a lesser charge. Here's a woman who was standing her ground, trying to protect her life 
from an abusive husband who abused his previous wives as well. And it's on record. And yet she didn't fire at him. She fired above him into the ceiling. And now she's going to have, she'll have time served. But this is what they do to us in the justice system. They either have the kangaroo court or force you to, to admit a guilt when you're not guilty. So folks, we got a, we got, as they say, Houston, we got a problem. Right. Now, Dr. Boyce. Yeah. You have a th you have a practice for those who are in New York, and I know we got some confused people. We got some hurt issues, and tomorrow there's going to be some serious praying going on before that turkey gets taken. <laughs> oh yeah. So, oh, oh yeah. Doctor Boyce, tell people where at least some of this help can be given to help you overcome your stumbling blocks. What do you guys well, say? in the Canarsie section of Brooklyn, about two blocks from one of the greatest churches. Uh, in America called Christian Cult Cultural Center, um, I have a both a private practice um, and as well as a petite, very petite university in which we offer uh, classes that are biblically undergirded and uh, therapeutically sound. In fact, we call it theopeutic, and I identify as a theopeutic advisor. But we offer individuals a chance to, um, to pour out and to, uh, and to gain measures of healing, to be able to identify stumbling blocks that have prevented them from uh, fulfilling their calls to Christ, from being um, uh, progressive and being able to stand. And we've met with many successes. I, I, I'm just, I just thank God for an opportunity to participate in that way, because that's what we do. We participate with Him to help people overcome their issues. Uh, so we uh, meet on Thursdays. In fact, we have an open house coming up on December 4th uh, from 2 until 5 p.m., but in fact, we've extended the time to 7 so that we can share some of the courses uh, that we offer, um, both biblical uh, uh, classes as well as um, uh, therapeutic or counseling classes. And of course, we offer technology. We have um, had one of the greatest uh, teachers, uh, our host, um, <laughs> teaching black history. And when, uh, you know, God has blessed his life so tremendously, he doesn't have time for us right now, but maybe at some point in the future. Um, and, and, of course, if you want private, one-on-one -on -one, uh, counseling uh, or therapy, uh, that's available as well. My phone number is 718 916-8763, located on uh, East 107th between Flatlands and Avenue J. It's, uh, the address is 920 East 107th Street. All right. So, Dr. Boyce. Yeah. I want to thank you for coming on as you are able to give me some of your time to help you know, help uh, ferret through some of the issues that are confronting our our communities, both uh, in, in those personal and, uh, you know, the issues like domestic violence and uh, technology issues. I mean, it, go, it runs the gamut as we talk because racism is institutionalized and it can go from A to Z. And yeah. we all need help. But it all starts with an appreciation and understanding of your own personal relationship with your maker. Understand that this is the season we're in, ladies and gentlemen. From now till December 31st, you got a short amount of time to get your life back together because I got it on good authority that he is coming back. Better get your house in order. Again, that's right. Get the house in order because some of y'all going to get left behind. All right. But in the meantime, that's right. Emotions are high. When emotions are high. And when you're in a crisis situation, um, you need to be able to sit down and have a conversation with somebody so that you don't store and internalize and prevent your own progress and success in life. Amen. Don't let, don't be left out. Don't leave you, uh, leave your family out. And if you are a couple going through a crisis, please seek help. 
All right. You've okay. been okay. listening to the BCS Experience on the GoPro Radio Network. I apologize for the technical difficulties. I really wanted to get a few calls in tonight, but I think we covered it well. My friends, this is your Social Network's live talk radio show produced and sponsored by BW Moving Images. Tylon, you save your Washington producer. Keenan, you got a gold star today, brother man. I know you were back there sweating bullets trying to get my show on the air. Thank you so much, my online engineer. A special thank you to the Jazz Lounge Project and Andrew Julian Myers for my fabulous show's theme music. Now, see, your support of beat-upping moving images, you need to get that present, get it together. Don't, you know, forget about Black Friday. Buy black. Don't give your money to Walmart, Sears, Target, or any of those other people. Buy black. Get your copy of Disappearing Voices, The Decline of Black Radio. I'm telling you, you need to know why we're on the air and why GoPro Radio is the fastest growing network in the universe and the galaxy. Tune in next Wednesday when my show, The BCS Experience. We'll be on from 5 to 6 p.m. Coming up next <laughs> is We the People with Sonny B. Sutherland from 6 to 7 and followed by the Earl Morgan Hour from 7 to 8. And then check out KD Uncensored from 8 to 9. And before you kiss your special other good night, tune in to the Sexy Party Show hosted by Mr. Lacario and Paviano Connor right here on the GoPro Radio Network. Hey! I'm Byron C. Saunders, and it's been all about the BCS experience. Join me next Wednesday when my special guest will be you, <laughs> my listening audience, with another opportunity to appreciate our rich cultural history and learn how it impacts on our lives today. Until then, hey, hey I'm out of here for the moment. Peace and love always, and happy Thanksgiving to you. Ready for this? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I want to tell you.